Good morning everyone! Today's video is about how to draft a medieval style kirtle pattern like this one. A quick note before we get on to the video, I just wanted to warn you that the next clip of audio is mm, not great sounding and I do apologize for that. I am still learning and getting better with each new video. With that in mind, let's start. So if you're familiar with modern sewing, then you might be familiar with the idea of a body sloper or body block which is essentially kind of the building block for making any of your own patterns. You've made a very basic pattern piece that has all of your measurements in mind, your bust, your waist, your shoulder width, and so on, and you can then take that, that building block and make a new neckline or make a different sleeve style, make it higher waist, lower waist, whatever you want to do, which is great, and that is kind of a modern cornerstone of pattern making. The way that you're handling bust fullness in a modern pattern, because we as humans are not shaped like perfect tubes, we have a little bit of curve, whether it's out curve, in curve, some combination thereof, you handle that curve through darts, which is this little guy right here. For medieval patterns where you don't really see any indication of darts in the medieval portraiture that shows us what these garments would have looked like, again, no darts. So where do you put that bust fullness? A lot of people who do medieval reenactments and sewing, they will put the fullness either in the front seam, in the side seam, or a little bit of both. That is my preference. I like to have a little bit of the fullness on both sides in order to accommodate that. If you're someone who's very slim built with relatively little bust, you don't have to worry about that as much. You can go with relatively straight seams and it's not going to be an issue. But if you're somewhat busty, you're going to need to figure out where are you going to handle that fullness. And there's definitely some different schools of thought about which one's better. I'm going to show you mine. It might not work for you. Give it a try and find out, right? To draft a pattern, we're going to need measurements. Start off by tying a string around your waist and let it settle into the smallest part of your waist. We will be using that as a reference point from here on out. Measure from the back or the side of your neck down to the waist. This will give us our baseline vertical axis. Starting from the waist, measure up to the underside of the bust. Mark that height and then measure from the waist to the fullest point of the bust and mark that height too. The next mark is for my neckline. Where you want this to go depends on the neckline of the style that you're aiming for. Chances are you'll want to start with at least the same amount as you're using for the under bust to bust measurement. Go ahead and extend all of those marks horizontally across your pattern. If you were making a true body block style pattern, then you would probably not do this lower neckline here, but instead you would measure from the waist to the hollow of the neck. But I'm not, so pretend this isn't here. Now we're going to get some of the horizontal measurements in place. Get the waist measurement where the string was tied earlier. Sorry that it's a little bit off screen here at the bottom, but hopefully you get the idea. Divide that waist measurement by four and center it on the vertical baseline we did at the beginning. Measure the fullest part of the bust and do be careful that you don't let the tape slip low onto your back. Try to keep it parallel to the floor if possible. Draw a gently curving line to connect the waist and bust measurements, continuing up and in a little bit as you get above the bust. Measure from the waist to the underside of your arm and transfer that measurement to paper. That is going to be the start of the armhole. Measure around your arm right where it meets the shoulder and divide that in half. Use that to make the arm side. The style of medieval dress I'm going for has a rather wide neckline, almost like a modern boat neck. To get that on paper, I am specifically making a wide and shallow line here for the neck. To start the skirt, I'm drawing a line out and away from the waist. If you have a particularly large difference between your waist and your hips, 
then you might want to consider measuring how wide the start of the hip area is but I'm pretty lazy and I'm just going to start my A-line skirt from the waist. I'm eyeballing the angle right now, but once you actually physically try on a mock-up, you may find that you want a fuller or slimmer skirt depending on the style that you're recreating. So far, we have made just one pattern by taking the measurements around the waist and the bust and dividing them by four. But your body isn't actually quite evenly divided into four, usually not anyways. So to adjust for this, measure from side seam to side seam around the front over the fullest part of your bust and measure from side seam to side seam across the back at the same height. Verify that you have enough room built into the front of your pattern. I'm actually going to extend mine out a little bit here to accommodate my bust. Cut this out and we'll adapt it to the back piece pattern. Trace the front piece onto a new piece of paper, and for every bit that we added into the front to accommodate for bust, I'm going to need to remove that from the center back. So the total bust measurement should be approximately correct again. I find that my wide necked garments like this work a little bit better and are less likely to fall off the shoulder if I make the shoulder a little bit narrower on the back piece. I'm also going to make the strap a tiny bit shorter since I tend to prefer the shoulder seam to be a little bit more towards the back rather than the front. To make sure that our skirt angles are approximately mirrored on the pattern, fold in half along the center baseline and remove the kind of extra angle that sticks out more. Da da da! -da the front and back draft is done. To make the skirt, just continue the angle off the hip until you've reached floor length. There's actually kind of a couple ways to tackle that, but I'll talk about that more in the next video. I do want to touch a bit on sleeves before I go though. I generally prefer to drape my sleeves, but having the approximate measurement via drafting is probably a good way to start. So for the sleeves, we'll need to get the arm length first, starting from the point where your shoulder meets your arm and going down to the wrist. In reality, you're probably going to want it a little bit longer than that, but this will get us started. That sleeve length measurement will become our new baseline. And using measurements around the wrist, elbow, and bicep, you can see the basic sleeve pattern sort of thing take shape. To make a medieval style S-shaped arm side, use the shoulder to wrist measurement on one half of your baseline towards the top here and use an underarm to wrist measurement on the second half. Connect those in a little S type wavy shape like the one I'm drawing here. Double check that the arm side measurement that you used on the front and back pieces match up with the curve that you've created here. Mine was a little bit short, so I'm extending it out like so. Connect the dots on the measurement lines you made earlier and we have a very basic sleeve. Now that you have a very rough pattern started for the curl and the sleeves, you're actually not done yet. It's time to make a bunch of mock-ups. For something this fitted, I often go through two, three, four mock-ups before I'm happy enough with the fit to start on the actual fabric. Don't get discouraged if your first mock-up doesn't fit perfectly. I promise you that with a bit of patience and determination, you'll eventually have a sexy, sexy medieval curl pattern. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I'm super excited for the next one where I'll be using this pattern. Good night, everyone.